Hey everyone, it's that math magician. And on this video, we're gonna still take a look at geometric sequences and now figure out that big second component for geometric sequences. Now in the previous video, we determined how to find that common ratio for a geometric sequence with these two examples that we have here. Remember, for a geometric sequence, you are multiplying by the same number to get each consecutive term. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just write it out one more time here. For this first sequence in the previous video, we found out that r equaled three. The common ratio is three because that's the number that we're multiplying each term by to get the next number. Same thing over here on the right. On this sequence here, the common ratio was one half or if you want to use that as a decimal, it is 0 0.5, right? Both are acceptable there. Again, the big thing that we focused on in the previous video is making sure we're thinking in terms of what are we multiplying by, not what are we dividing by. It's very easy for us to look at this sequence and think, oh, we're dividing by two. 16 divided by two gives me eight. Eight divided by two gives me four. So the common ratio must be two, but it's not. We have to make sure we're thinking in terms of what are we multiplying by, okay? And by multiplying, we're multiplying by one half. Now, just like with the arithmetic sequences, the other second component that is the most important for us is that zero term. Remember, we're now thinking about what is that term that would come before the first term in both sequences here. Remember, when you see a sequence being written out to start with, you're always starting off with the first term, the second, the third, and the fourth. This is the first, the second, the third, and the fourth. We now wanna figure out what is that zero term? What is the term before our first term? Now, very, very similar to how we did it with arithmetic sequences. If you forgot, remember, to find the zero term for an arithmetic sequence, we would take the first term and we would subtract the common difference. For geometric sequences, we're still gonna look at our first term and we're going to divide by our common ratio. Very similar, we're doing the opposite operation that's happening in that sequence. So since we're multiplying to get the same number every time, if I wanna move backwards in that sequence here, instead of multiplying by the common ratio, I have to divide. So let's see how this is gonna play out. So I wanna find out the zero term. Remember, the T of zero here stands for what is the term in our zero position. So T of zero equals for this, we need to take our first term. Our first term here is t of one, right? t of one is our first term, but we know that t of one here is just two. That is our first term. We need to take that and we need to divide it by the common ratio. So I'm going to now divide two by our common ratio in this first sequence here we know that our common ratio was three. So we are taking two and we're dividing it by three. Well, two divided by three, that again, you could write it as a fraction or a decimal. Two divided by three will either be two thirds or if you wanted to write that out as a decimal, that would be 0 0.667 if you round that out. That right there, is how you find out that zero term. This term here in the zero position, that would be two over three. And why? Again, we can always check our work here. If I take two thirds and I multiply it by three, that three on the bottom will cancel and we'll just be left with a two. That's how you find the zero term when you know your common ratio. All you gotta do is take that first term, divide it by the common ratio. Let's go ahead and do it one more time now, and we'll do it 
for the sequence on the right. Again, same idea here. We're taking t of zero. To find t of zero, we need to take the first term or t of one, and we need to divide that by the common ratio. Now, if you notice here, I did write this a little differently on the right side than I did on the left side. On the left side, I wrote it out with the operation, t of one divided by r. That's the same thing that's happening over here. I'm just writing it as a fraction. Still t of one divided by r, okay? Same idea, just writing it in two different ways. Now looking at this sequence here, I see that t of one is 16. My first term here is 16. So I take 16 and we divide it by the common ratio. Now, since I'm doing this as a fraction, it doesn't really make too much sense to put another fraction underneath there, um, only because usually when we write a fraction, we don't like to have another fraction in there as well. So instead of writing one half there, I'm actually going to use the decimal version of that common ratio, and I'm gonna write 0 0.5. So now's the time where you're gonna take out your calculator and you need to plug into your calculator 16 divided by 0 0.5. You do that and you end up with a value of 32. And remember, this should make sense because as we move to the right here with this sequence, the numbers were getting smaller. 16, 8, 4, 2, they were getting smaller. So as I move in the left direction, the number should be getting bigger. And this number should be bigger than 16, and that ends up being 32. Again, if I take 32, I times it by one half, I would get 16. That is how we find the zero term in a geometric sequence. Again, it boils down to get your first term, divide it by your common ratio. That's why it's so important that we find that common ratio first, because we can't find the zero term unless we know the common ratio. All right, guys, it's That Math Magician, and I'll see you on the next video.